Hello, Mary. Hi, Gigi. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this interview. Um, as you know, 12th of October is World Ascent Day. And UCB is the radio station that has its community at the core of its activities. And I felt that it is well worth it to come in and interview you today. Can you please introduce yourself to us? So I'm Mary Dowson, I'm the director of BCB, which is Bradford Community Broadcast, and I'm one of the co-founders of it. We started back in, well, we did our first broadcast in 1992 as a festival radio, and then the same in 93. And we really realised the importance of ordinary people, grassroots communities, and diverse communities, having a place in the media. And at that time, this is now 30 years ago, it was there was no place for for communities to have their voice in the media. They just didn't exist. And if you didn't speak in a particular way, if you weren't from a particular class, there was no way you could go. You couldn't have your voice in the media. So we set up BCB as a, as a community radio organisation to include as many people's voices as, as we could and to encourage people to become active broadcasters because most of the time we're passive consumers of media and what we wanted to do was turn people into active broadcasters. So that's that's absolutely at the heart of what we do. And as I say, we've been going now for 30 years and we, we try to involve as many different people as possible in the life of the, of the radio station and giving people the skills and confidence and support to actually make their own programmes and to have their voice heard in the media. Fantastic. I mean, I've been here myself and I see the great work that you do. I've seen people with varying disabilities or different abilities, if you like. I've seen people from different and diverse backgrounds, all of them having their say, being encouraged and motivated um, to become um, broadcasters, if you like. I am one of them. I recently became a presenter and um, working with different communities. So that is amazing what we or what you do here at the um, BCB. What would you say that there is a, a relationship or a connection between language, accent and the media? Would you say that? And um, what is it? Well, for an awful long time, if you didn't speak in a particular way, then you had no place in the media. And there was that you know, received pronunciation that there was only one one way of, of, of speaking in the media in, in, in the UK. And over time, that has changed. And I think we have actually started to appreciate the richness of diverse voices, diverse accents in the media. And, and I think actually now people are actually hunting out People have got so interesting accents, which is very interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, the whole relationship with sort of um, accents and class and what that means is a you know is a rich scene that we can tap. But I think now that the media is, is actually actively looking for people who've got an interesting voice. Oh wow, that's interesting to know. Oh, so so that's one of the things that me, the media houses can do to um, in, include diverse voices in the media. What more do you think should be done to encourage diverse voices? Because I think this is a two-way street. So you are, if you can look at it from the media perspective, and you're looking at uh, corporate social responsibility, where um, an organization actually is expected to reflect its community and contribute actually to the community, which is what I've seen happening here. How can we encourage the community to embrace the help, if you like, that's coming from the media. Well, I think I think we've still got to recognise that there is a prejudice against some accents, and I think there is a kind of interpretation that if you speak in a particular way, that either you're not very bright, or that you're from a, the wrong class, you're from a, a working class background, or what you're saying hasn't got as much validity. So I think I think although there's been great inroads into how the media represent um, people with different accents. I still think there is uh, an in inherent sort of prejudice against the way that some uh, people talk. And I think that this, we've still got a long way to go to actually recognise that, that how we speak is how we speak. And, it, and what we say is what we should be listening to 
not sort of have somebody saying that necessarily. And I, so I think I think although they say we've made made great inroads in in having diversity of accents in the media, there is I think there is still a, a prejudice against how some people speak, and it's seen as as what you're saying hasn't got as much validity. Absolutely, and I thank you for mentioning that. Um, I'm interested to know: Have you got an accent story? Is there any story you can tell us around about accents? Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I suppose I, I grew up in in London, in South London, and um, but my parents were from County Durham, and they from very working class families in in County Durham, and and they moved to to London because there was no war, work in the northeast. Um, they moved there, you know, in the late nineteen forties, and and we were all brought up in London. But my mum had the biggest chip on her shoulder because of the way that she spoke. And it only needs one or two people to make fun of your accent for you to feel, to lose your confidence, completely lose your confidence in who you are and what you do. And my mum lived all her life with that no confidence in herself. And I, it took me a long time to recognise that. And once I did, I thought, right, okay, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that nobody else feels that way about the way that they speak or, or they're not looked at in the way that frowned upon because of the way that they speak. Because it's just wrong. It's, it's wrong, wrong. Goody. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. wrong, wrong, wrong. So did your mum move from London to Yorkshire? No, she no, she she um, moved from County Durham in the North East right, yeah. down to London and right. she lived the her right. life, rest of her life in, right. in, in, uh, in London. So, right. um, but with, a, with, you know, what she... It wasn't a very strong northern, but she was so conscious of her accent, and and it was a time when people did, you know, frown upon if you didn't speak in a particular way. So so anyway, so I say I've done all I can to try and or do all I can to try and make sure that people are proud of proud of who they are and proud of how they speak and and have a confidence that comes from inside and being who you are. Thank you very much for that. I mean, we mentioned earlier on that Bradford is rich in diversity, is vibrant, is diverse. And I see that diversity in BCB. Actually, BCB stands for British Community. Bradford, Bradford Community. <laughs> Broadcasting. Now, how have you been able to successfully manage this rich diversity? Can you share some wisdom nuggets? How you've successfully managed the different people coming in here, um, you know, and it's been successful so far. How have you been able to manage that along with your team? I think what, what we really try and do is hunt people out, really. Because I think most people, most people don't see themselves as broadcasters. They don't, you know. <laughs> you know and so when, when you suggest to somebody, oh, they might like to come onto the radio. Oh, no, not me. You know, like, oh, oh no, I couldn't do that. Or, and I think what we do, what we try and do is really move with people at the pace that's right for them, to to give them training, to give them support, to move quite slowly if that's what they need to do, but also to kind of support people, to sometimes jump in at the deep end as well. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it, it, the more that, you know, you might say, oh, no, 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 well, maybe. And when we get that maybe, that's when we sort of try and say, right, okay, how about coming to do this? Or come and do this with me, or sit in on this. Or, so it's not actually setting people up to fail, yeah. but really trying to do things in a way which is really supportive mm -hmm. and, and to help people to move at the pace that's right for them. And, and you know, and, and encourage and support. And we do try and give a lot of that support to people to, to become broadcasters. Amazing. I mean, Bradford won the City of Culture 2025. What role are you going to play? Exactly. <laughs> well, it's such an important thing for Bradford, and and uh, I've been very involved right from the start with the bid to become city oh, of culture. And I was, I was the um, the chair at the beginning of the organisation, oh. starting, and have been interim chair again. So it's it's been absolutely the heart of what I do. It it is such an opportunity for us to just to say, this is Bradford. This is Bradford. We're going to show you what Bradford is. Mm. Come and see us. Don't just listen to all the horrible media stories that have been for the last 20, 30 years. <laughs> yeah. you know, and even this week at the conferences. You know, people don't understand Bradford from the outside. Mm. But we can show them now. We've got a whole year yeah. and beyond to yeah. show people this is Bradford. This is who we are. Come and be part of it.
Thank you very much. In other words, we would want to hurry to Bradford, won't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we would. We would want exactly. to hurry to Bradford. <laughs> we will have people hurrying to Bradford throughout 2025. Right. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure interviewing you, Mary. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you just wish us a happy World Accents Day? I'd like to wish everybody a happy World Accents Day on October the 12th. Thank you. <laughs>